Hi there, I am Bonnie McCaffrey, and thank you so much for coming back for another vidcast this month. Well, I am here with Gail Lothar, who I met in New Zealand, and she had this spectacular exhibit of long, narrow quilts all in one place. It was really a beautiful. They were all different, but they had that similar flavor of the format. And tell me about what that exib exhibit was. Well, the idea was um, we'd had one and then another trip to New Zealand, absolutely loved it, but we couldn't really say after such a short time that we really knew the country well. We'd fallen in love with it, but it had been like more lots of little glimpses through a half-open door. So that was the idea behind this series of quilts. A lot of little slivers, um, right. just like a peep through a half-open door, and a you have a little look and you think, oh, I'd like to know more about that, or I like the look of that, but then there's lots more to see, so you move on to something else. Yeah. So that was the original idea behind the collection of quilts. I love the idea of it. Now, these four quilts here, this one looks mm -hmm. like a glimpse of one of the Maori people. That's right. That's one of my favorites. That's called Moko, which is the name of their facial tattoo, um, inspired by lots of the uh, the ferns and the animals and the birds in New Zealand. Right. And I wanted the idea of a Maori warrior looking as though his face is just coming out of the shadows. So um, that's oh, actually yeah. one of my very favorites of yeah. the whole collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here we have the ocean. Yep, the uh, the classic, iconic New Zealand seascape with the beautiful jade and navy yeah. water going down into the caramel sands. Yeah. And then, oh, here we have some of the Maori symbolism. Yep, that's right. The paintings that they have on their meeting houses, painted in black and red and white traditionally. I suppose because those were the easiest pigments to get hold of right. in the early days. Um, and then inevitably the sheep. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when I drove around New Zealand, I think I saw every sheep that lived there, along with every cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are a lot of them. Yeah, when UK people first started going to New Zealand, they used to bring those T-shirts back, didn't they? You know, there are 10 million sheep in New Zealand, and I've seen every blooming one of them. Well, there are a lot of sheep in New Zealand. <laughs> So I thought yeah. they deserved their own quilt. Yeah, they did, because it is part of it. Okay, so these here, tell me about yep. this one. That's the beautiful Pahutikawa. I mean, it took me about two weeks to learn to say that word, and I'm mm. still not sure I can spell it properly. Um, but they're also known as the New Zealand Christmas tree, because they come out at Christmas time, which of course is full summer there, and they have these gorgeous red blossoms, and then glossy green leaves, and so they look very, very Christmassy. So they've, they've become kind of symbolic of a New Zealand Christmas. And I love how you have the fuzzy edge of them. <laughs> well, That's because really they're made of lots and lots of different, different spikelets, I thought, well, I didn't just want to do it with machine quilting. I thought that would be a little bit flat. So I gave it some texture yeah. with the wavy shears, Wonderful. left the, the edges rough, and then the, each stamen has a little yellow dot at the end. So yeah. I just put those That's on wonderful. to symbolize that. Okay, you have a spot for this one. Oh, I love the colors in this. That was inspired by the Art Deco architecture of Napier, Napier um, which I just yeah. fell in love with. It converted me to Art Deco in an instant. I'd always hated Art Deco up till oh. then, um, but I fell in love with it in Napier, these beautiful mid pastel colors, and everything inspired either by the sort of ge uh, geometric shapes that the Art Deco artists loved, or by the sort of Mayan ferns and blossoms, yeah. um, which is what yeah. inspired this one. And I love this bias that you have on there. That's beautiful. Nice outline. Thank you. So this piece, tell me about this well, one. Well, one of the strange things about the Auckland skyline is there are lots and lots of little green pudding-shaped hills. And what those are are extinct volcanoes, where London um, perhaps would have a park, uh, Auckland has an extinct volcano, and you can climb up them and get a beautiful view of the city. Um, but one of the ones that's best known is called One Tree Hill, but there isn't a tree on the top of One Tree Hill now. There was for many hundreds of years, oh. but they became a sort of symbol of unrest. So anytime anybody wanted to do a protest, they would climb One Tree Hill and cut down the tree. So oh. after hundreds of years of this, the authorities finally decided right at the beginning of this century, they would cut it down, the final one down, which had been damaged oh. in an attack um, one night time by somebody wielding a chainsaw climbing up the hill. Um, so, and they wouldn't replant it. So there mm -hmm. now is no tree on One Tree Hills, but I thought I would restore it. Um, and because it's sort of passed into the annals of time, it's fairy tale now, I would give it a kind of fairy tale feel. I love it. And because it's my only nighttime quilt, it's got the classic um, star oh. that appears on the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand flag, the Southern Cross. And if you look very, very carefully, you might find a kiwi. Oh, a kiwi, mm -hmm. meaning the fruit. No, 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 the, the little animal. 
The oh. little animal. What's yes. a kiwi? Uh, what's a kiwi? I'm the kiwi. kiwi fruit. No, no, the kiwi is the symbolic bird of New Zealand. You don't see oh. them very often because they're nocturnal and they're very shy and they're also quite endangered. So your chances of falling over one while you're out for your morning run are fairly slim. Ah, oh, and so there, him? there's yeah. the little yeah. hidden kiwi. There he is, right Usually there. Usually children spot him earliest, but yeah. Yeah, oh. so in the absence of kiwis, the wonderful bird called the uh, pukeko has become the kind of unofficial official bird of New Zealand. And there's a quilt featuring the pukekos up there. I see. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I love all the texture in here. Well, when we first went to New Zealand, I was desperate to go to the place called Rotorua because I knew it was where lots Loved of it. the geothermal activity um, oh. and all the sort of hot and cold water geysers or geysers as they call them have been bringing these minerals up to the surface for millennia and they've all crystallized and made these beautiful colors. So that was what I wanted to capture in this quilt. Um, and you have because oh, I've you. seen those colors and oh. you have captured the colors because it's amazing. This water is the strangest color. <laughs> um, it's not actually water, I think. I think it's water uh, the, yeah, and other absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, uh, yes. You have captured the colors. It's just yeah. beautiful. And a, a little bit stinky there. Uh, but, just a bit, yes. But, but worth going. Yes. Well, when we first arrived, the, the guy that picked us up from the airport, he and his wife had moved from Yorkshire years ago. Hadn't lost any of their Yorkshire tracks. And, and he's sitting in the front going, me and the wife, we don't notice the smell anymore. But you can probably smell it. Can you smell it? And we're sitting in the back going, yeah, it does whiff. Get, but you do get used to yeah. it. And say, it's okay. not all the time, mercifully. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's not that Oh, and so here, let, let's take a look at this. This is your beautiful book, which I have just peeked through. And you have every quilt from the exhibit yep, in there. And 35. what I think is really fascinating is that you have included uh, techniques of some of the quilts. Yep, is it every quilt? We've the talked to either, each quilt has either got um, in, instructions on how to make it, so it's got a complete project, or I've talked in quite a lot of detail about the technique I've used for putting yeah. it together. I think that's wonderful because oh, you really you. did use a wide variety of techniques. And we've put lots of lovely photographs of New Zealand as well yeah. just to give people a oh, taste nice. of what it's like. That's wonderful. Okay, so let's take a look. This is one more quilt that you have. Yep, this mm -hmm. one always seems to be the most eye-catching. This is called Seascape for obvious reasons and it's just trying to capture those characteristic colours of teal and navy which yeah. are so representative of the New Zealand water. Um, and because it's beautiful clear water, because it's a very young country, it's very unpolluted and you can just paddle in the crystal waters mm -hmm. and pick up bits of shell oh, and bits yeah, of power shell yeah. and so on. So this has always been one of the most eye-catching quilts of the display. Okay, so this is like the little baby seascape. Um, you've seen the mother one, um, and I wanted to do a little one that people could put together very quickly. So this is the wonderful rough edge applique, which simply means that you don't have to finish off the edges, which is the sort of technique I like. Um, and there are so many lovely fabrics around that they kind of make the seascape themselves. So all I've done is just make up some little kits for the people that come to the workshop which have got all these glitzy fabrics in and, and we do love them down we love glitz. we do love glitz i love my bling so you've got all sorts of wonderful shiny sparkly ones and sheer ones and great cobwebby ones like this these are new ones that i found this year i thought <gasps> they were gorgeous Ooh, and ones oh with stars gosh, on so and uh, as people see you know when they when they start working with one of these they just lay them out and it creates a, a seascape just straight away yeah. and then i put in some little bits of yarn on. and once they've laid the pieces of fabric out in a way that suits them they can keep it neat on the edge they can they can uh, leave it all wiggly some people put a little bit of sky at the top um, I've got it so the Sun's just sort of sparkling down on the water down oh. at the bottom it looks quite scruffy but then what I get people to do is just couch some of the yarns down onto the fabric and I like doing several tricks all at once, several different techniques all at once. So what I do is I put a piece of wadding behind and as I'm couching the yarns down by machine, put a little zigzag in, use a variegated blue-green thread and then you don't have to keep changing it. And then you're doing three jobs at once, you're couching the yarns, you're couching the fabrics down and you're quilting it all in well, one go. Well, how perfect is that? <laughs> it's got my the sort of technique that's got yeah. my name written all over it. Uh, Absolutely. And then once all the couching's done, you can add some little bits of shells and uh, beads and bits and pieces. And then I've put into each of my packs a little bit of uh, New Zealand power shell, yeah. what we would call abalone, and I think you would call oma. Yeah. Um, we actually call it abalone. Oh, right. Yeah. Yep, same stuff. Um, and then the, the Maori use those for decorative 
effects and accents in their crafts. Yeah. Um, so that's lovely to have on the beach. And then I found a great little bit of, uh, of batik which just picked up all the seaside colours and used that to bind it and just yeah. give it a sort of unity it's across the beautiful. whole thing. Just beautiful. Well, let me throw you a little bit of a curve. What I would mm -hmm. like to know is, Gail, what is your philosophy of life? Um, to um, that's a very good question. It is a good I would one. say um, my work philosophy is to create beautiful things that enhance people's life. Love that. Um, I'm a committed Christian, so my husband and I like to work in the community, work in our church, um, and basically be um, what. Um, people would sometimes call salt and light. Um, trying to What's sort of salt enhance. And the idea is just trying to be a good influence on society. So the idea is that salt preserves things. Um, salt so, and light. Yep. So sort of stopping the rot, okay. um, if you like. Yeah. Um, so trying to work for social justice and things like that. And light would be sort of shining the light of beautiful things, God's oh. light into the world. Um, and that's why I like to create lovely things. I feel incredibly fortunate to have been born in the Western world, where I have the leisure to work with gorgeous families fabrics and threads and, and meet lovely people at quilt shows and so Absolutely. on. Um, you know, and we, we have so many privileges in the Western world, it's lovely just to be able to share them around, isn't it? It really is. Gail, thank you so much for sharing your techniques. I love your quilts and it's really been great to chat with you. Oh, it's been lovely to catch up with you, Bonnie. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And thank you all for com coming and watching and I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.